we are with Claudia Lucero, the author of One Hour Cheese. And today, we're gonna be making some one hour cheese. But first, for people who are a little nervous about making cheese at home, how do you quell their fears? You know, we've been making cheese humans for thousands and thousands of years. We used yeah. to do it without kitchens, without right. thermometers, without any special equipment. So yeah. it really is an ancient thing that's pretty natural to us. So um, I just ask, you know, I guess to think about that and trust and just jump in. Mm. And for people who say like, well, you know, my cheese is aged for years and it's not, you know, how can I possibly make it at home? You know, how do you explain right. sort of the one hour cheese concept? Right, so one hour cheeses are fresh cheeses essentially. There's a lot of moisture in them because we haven't aged them. Right. They're mild, so they'll be like a ricotta, paneer, uh, mozzarella, delicious creamy cheeses, but they don't have the flavor that comes with aging. Right. But that's why in the book I really get into fun things about, um, herbs and spices and smoked salt right um, and so you can act up the flavor in that way what are the absolute essentials for your yeah kitchen? <laughs> pretty simple the basic kitchen equipment pot a colander some measuring utensils a thermometer is good to have and some good fine mesh cheesecloth right but other than that it's just regular kitchen equipment all right so we've got all of our ingredients here where do we begin so we have our nice stainless steel pot we're going to turn on the heat to about a medium to medium high. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna put in a quart of whole milk. And it's really important to have the whole milk here. I think so. With cheese, and especially with fresh cheeses, you want it to be creamy and yeah. delicious, and so mm -hmm. I think might as well go with the whole milk for the recipes that call for it. There are some recipes that actually do better with um, low-fat milk, like the string cheeses, so in the book yeah. I'll say when that is. Okay. So we're gonna heat this up to a nice simmer. If you don't have a thermometer, what you're looking for is foam all over the top, lots of steam, and bubbles around the edges. But if you do have a thermometer, 185 degrees Fahrenheit is what we're looking for. And about how long should that take for impatient people who want to like yeah. crank the heat up and they should not do that? Which is me. <laughs> That's yeah. okay if you're impatient and you want to yeah. crank the heat up, but you have to constantly stir the bottom if you do that right. because the milk, the sugars fire. will burn and boil over. That's not over. a flavor you want in your no, cheese. No, that's usually not. So. <laughs> Uh, that's okay, just stir it up and make sure that you're all right there. But it'll take probably seven minutes or so. So that's the, the longest uh, step in this whole process. The longest step is just heating up your milk. It is, yep. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But while that heats up, I like to tell people about everything else that you'll need Great. and so you will know what's coming. So what we're going to acidify the milk with, which is essentially gonna separate the curds and whey, is apple cider vinegar today. Mm. Uh, you can use lemon juice, you can use white wine vinegar, you can use lime juice. Uh, so really this is the cheese that, go to your pantry, rate it, see what you have, see and use that have. vinegar or lemon juice uh, with whatever milk you have as well. In addition to the vinegar, we're going to use really simple, common supplies. We're getting some steam here, but we still need it to go quite a while. So, salt. You want to use a pure salt, sea salt, flake salt, um, pickling salt. But it's important that it doesn't have anti-caking agents, chemicals, so just look on the back of the package and if it says pure salt, you're in good shape. Okay. Herbs, because you can do anything with these cheeses. Really, they're a blank canvas, and yeah. so you're gonna add layers and layers of flavor with whatever you add. And some lemon pepper that we're gonna gr grind freshly into the curds here. Wow. Um, but you can really use honey, red pepper flakes, uh, and just really make it to your taste. So we're getting there, let's check the temperature. What you want to add is about an eighth of a cup. But really, even that is pretty flexible. As soon as you see the curds and whey separate, that's when you know you have enough. So that's what's really great about this first timer's cheese is it's meant to be foolproof. So we're at about 185, 190 degrees. And to that quart of milk, we're gonna add our apple, apple cider vinegar. We'll drizzle it in, mix it in. We're slowly acidifying the milk and being gentle about it so we allow curds to form. And as soon as you see the curds clearly separate from the whey, and the curds are the white solids, the whey is the sort of yellowish liquid, then you know you have enough and you can turn off your heat. Oh, so you don't even put, you don't need to put all of the vinegar in? No, I over poured here, but it's about an eighth of a cup. Once you see it really start to look Yeah, because like if, you, if you do use low-fat milk or yeah. an ultra-pasteurized milk, which really I don't recommend, 
uh, this will be a little bit different. This cheese will almost be like a fresh mozzarella, and since mm. today we have really awesome milk, uh, unhomogenized, that's yeah. what we're gonna get. So we're gonna pour it through here, and you'll see the liquid is gonna go through the cloth, through the colander, into the bowl. So this is what you get for a quart of, from a quart of milk. So I'd say it's about a cup, just shy of a cup of cheese. So you just wanna drain it. When you see that not much is coming out, just give it a last squeeze because there's a little bit trapped in the middle. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Uh, but the next step is actually gonna take care of some of it, some of that way again, because we're gonna add some salt, Great. about half a teaspoon. You can always adjust. Mm -hmm. And then you break up the curds and mix in that salt. So once you see that it's really, you know, there isn't a pool of whey anywhere, very easy. You get your pepper, and then at this point, it's just however much you like of your spice or herb, and you just serve it. That's it. That's it. You're done. That's it. Like this isn't a one hour cheese, this you is a cheese. 15 minute yeah, cheese. Yeah, and one hour cheese is kind of misleading because a lot of the cheeses in the book you can make faster than that. I think one of the awesome things about making your own cheese is you get to taste cheese freshly made and warm. Yeah. And it's really, really the best that way. Right. So I would try it immediately. Don't waste that opportunity. Claudia, thank you so much. And obviously, if anyone thought that was as easy as I did, <laughs> you can pick up the book. It's called One Hour Cheese. Thank you so much. Thank you.